Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the show. Welcome to the show on the coronavirus spreading out of Wuhan, China. Uh, today is January 28th. It's a Tuesday and uh, let's get started. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look at what's going on. You know, uh, British Columbia and Canada has reported its first presumptive case of coronavirus is a man recovering after home after a trip to Wuhan. Uh, so the BEC, British Columbia, Canada health officials are very concerned. You can see the concerned look on her face. Uh, it says British Columbia has recorded its first case of the novel coronavirus after a resident of the Vancouver region. Now, you know what? This is in British Columbia. They've already had a case in Toronto, Canada. So Canada is getting more than, is starting to get more cases starting to come in. A resident of the Vancouver region began to develop symptoms following a business trip to Wuhan, China. Provincial health official officer, Bonnie Henry, said the man in his 40s has returned to Vancouver last week and showed no symptoms. But he, he was self-monitoring out of an abundance of caution. He was watching himself. Okay, but he showed no symptoms. He contracted a primary health care provider the following day when he began to develop symptoms. I guess he developed the symptoms in Canada. The man was administered to a diagnostic test, and that test came back positive late Monday night, Dr. Henry said. The man's case is still considered a presumptive positive pending confirmation from a laboratory in Winnipeg, but Dr. Henry said, we are confident this is truly a case of this novel coronavirus. Says the man is self-isolating at home and doing well. So he's at home. Uh, I can see all kinds of situations developing from this. You know, he's at home. He's not in a sterile uh, room that uh, is uh, like in a hospital where they have certain types of rooms that are pressure, uh, they're negative pressure rooms, they're called. And so it doesn't let any airborne particles escape. They have special rooms, the or quarantine rooms, where they put you in this negative pressure. Well, a house is not negative pressure, you know. Uh, it says he's self self-isolating himself at home. I can think of lots of situations that could happen where a person could be at home, you know, and uh, anything could happen. I mean, you know, that it could come in contact with other people somehow or, or some way, you know, it's not pressurized. This is an airborne virus. And we don't, at this point in time, we don't know just how uh, contagious it actually is. It's a brand new virus. It's a, it's a novel virus. It's brand new, you know. For all we know, it might be able to travel on the air for hundreds of feet. What about his next door neighbors even, you know? I mean, uh, okay, so anyway, let's move on. It says he's at home and doing well. It says members of his family are asymptomatic, meaning they're not showing any symptoms but are in regular contact with public health officials. Okay, so I got a few questions about this. These members of his family is it, that they're talking about that are asymptomatic, are they still like going around in public and every place, going to shopping centers and stuff like that? That's a question, right? And the, the next question, uh, have they had contact with this man? who is at home and doing well, members of his family. Uh, it says they are in regular contact with public health officials. So more than likely, they're in regular contact with public health officials because they've been exposed in one way or another. Otherwise, why would they be in regular contact with public health officials? That just would make sense. Uh, so they're asymptomatic, but he was asymptomatic too. Okay, before he came down with it. Okay, and so evidently members of his family, it says, are asymptomatic. But 
could there be a possibility that these members of his family are just like he was when he was asymptomatic, that they are uh, incubating the virus inside them? And are they being quarantined? Uh, or are they, and, and even him, it says a man is self-isolating himself at home. I mean, this is taking, uh, 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 putting an awful lot of responsibility on him. Uh, I mean, what if he's a sugar addict and in the middle of the night he decides, hey, you know, uh, I, I need a donut. And he runs down to the donut shop and he doesn't tell the health officials. You know, I mean, stuff like that happens. You know, because how serious is this man taking this? Because, you know, I mean, if this gets loose in North America, if it gets loose in Canada, it gets loose in all of America, too. So, so I mean, they're putting an awful lot of trust in him that he's, you know, I mean, I don't know the man. I don't know what kind of a character he is. Uh, people cheat. You know, I mean, take dieters, for instance. Uh, you can have a, 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 a dieter, he's, say he's a 500-pound man, and they, they tell him, you got to go on this strict diet, you know, and the doctor weighs him, weighs him in, and he weighs 500 pounds. So he comes in the next week, and he weighs 510 pounds. And the doctor says, did you cheat? And he says, no. Honest, honest, doc, I never cheated. Well, how did you gain 10 pounds over the period of week? Well, if you followed him around with a camera, you'd find out that he was cheating. Now, how do you know that this guy uh, doesn't decide to, they're putting an awful lot of faith in him anyway. Uh, I mean, for something that's this important. Anyway, let's move on. Dr. Henry says the risk of spread of this virus within BC remains low. Well, you know what? They've been spouting that off and spouting that off for days and days trying to keep the general public calm. Keep them calm. Tell them the, the danger remains low, low, low. You know, the risk of spread of this virus remains low. Meanwhile, while it's spreading, they're telling everybody it's remaining low. And I've heard this mantra over and over and over again about how the, the, this, the, the danger remains low. The danger remains low. It says, there is no evidence that the virus can be transmitted when the carrier is asymptomatic. Okay, let's reverse that. There's no evidence that the virus can not be transmitted when the carrier is asymptomatic. They don't have any evidence that it's not transmittable when the carrier is asymptomatic. Why take the chance? It says there's no evidence that the virus can be transmitted when the carrier is asymptomatic. How do they know? Just because there's no evidence, they haven't got direct evidence that the carriers are, 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 that can be transmitted when it's asymptomatic, doesn't mean that it can't. You know? I think they're taking an awful lot for granted with this virus. I'll tell you the truth. Now, the Chinese, you know, they're taking less for granted. They've closed all those cities off. 50 million people have basically surrounded them with an invisible wall trying to cut off this virus. The rest of the world needs to, needs to, needs to uh, uh, follow the Chinese's example and, and take extraordinary measures instead of lax, loose policies that might lead to the virus accidentally getting out into the general population where it would be impossible to track it anymore and they'd lose control over it. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to talk about China right now, and we're going to talk about uh, what they're doing in China and will it be effective. Uh, these measures, these draconian measures, it says it's too early to know if China lockdown will be effective in limiting the coronavirus spread, says experts. As health authorities work to contain the quick-spreading new coronavirus that has caused panic internationally, Chinese officials continue to impose restrictive travel measures. Drastic, it says, drastic containment efforts. Suspending plane, train, and bus to a city of 11 million people. 
uh, believed to be in the epicenter of the outbreak. It says the lockdown has expanded to 17 cities encompassing more than 50 million people. Uh, Tuesday, they announced additional restrictions saying that the region would be cutting off all rail links to mainland China. More than 4,500 people are sickened with the virus in the country's mainland. Uh, it's killed 106 people. And the majority of the fatalities have been in China's Hubei province. Stringent travel restrictions. Now, Dr. Isaac Bogoff, a infectious disease faculty member at the University of Toronto, said restricting travel to this extent is unprecedented. He says, where similar lockdown attempts have been made, including areas of Liberia during the Ebola epidemic the wor uh, and worldwide during the H1N1 virus outbreak, Boga said none have proven successful. It says, but will the restrictions be effective in China? Boga says it's still too early to tell. Uh... He says, I don't think anyone can look you in the eye and tell you with a straight face whether or not this will work or it will not work because we've never seen anything like this before. Now, here's where I agree with him. It says, Bogoff said the restrictions could slow the epidemic down. That's where I agree with him. I think that's what the effect's going to be, is it's going to slow it down. So I think it's very possible that over the next coming weeks, we're going to see maybe less news stories on this as the virus slows down for a little bit uh, and it's spread because of what the Chinese are effectively doing. But do I think it'll stop it? Well, what does he say here? He says, when these, when these things have been tried before, uh, they have none have been proven to be successful, he says. When similar lock, he says right here, while similar lockdown attempts have been made, including areas of Liberia during the Ebola epidemic and worldwide during the H1N1 virus outbreak, Bogoff said none have proven successful. So will it be successful this time when it hasn't been successful in the past? And also we have to consider that this, this virus seems to be very contagious. Um, more contagious than I think uh, than viruses that we've dealt with, uh, uh, like Ebola. I think it's far, this is far more contagious than Ebola, I believe. Now that's my personal opinion, but I believe it's far more contagious. And so it didn't prove successful with Ebola. But I do agree with him. I think this is going to slow this virus down and going to slow down the extent of the growth of it. So we're probably going to see a little period here while the virus is incubating in the next generation of people. Uh, and then we're going to probably see an uptick in it after that little period's over. What I found is I've done the math on this pretty much, and, and, uh, and it seems to be doubling every four days. And so I don't think this little period where the Chinese have possibly slowed it down by quarantining these cities, I don't think that little period is going to last very long. It might last a couple weeks. It might last just a few days. Or, I mean, it could last a couple months, but ultimately I think that the virus has already escaped the quarantine measures. I think that's, I think that's probably already happened, and that's my opinion only. I'm entitled to my opinion. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I think what the Chinese have done, though, have, have effectively slowed it down a little bit. Because basically they've cut off the the uh, the air the center of the virus is uh, ex ex expanded mostly in that center around Wuhan and they've cut that off so that there's no there's no getting out of that area you know they've blocked out all transport in and out of that area anyway listen thank you guys for listening to this report like and subscribe give a thumbs up and we'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye.